Alright, so we've been here at the golf house for a couple months now, and there's just some more electrical things that I don't enjoy about the way this house is set up. And I could spend a lot of time rewiring things, but we're in a condo, and I intend on mostly using this place as a rental, so I don't want to really bring in an electrician and spend all that money to have a few things that annoy me fixed. So I've been trying out some smart home things. Now generally I'm opposed to smart home things. I don't feel it's the right way, although they do offer a lot of convenience. And I've actually been enjoying playing with some of the home assistant setups and trying things out and just generally experimenting, getting back to the roots of the stuff that I used to do quite often with electronics and what actually brought me to virtualization in general and Proxmox videos. But getting off that topic, so a neighbor of mine told me here that there's a local smart home things store. Now I say things not as like the branding of the Samsung device, but just smart oh IOT devices in general. And that was cool, so I wanted to check it out. I just went down there and I got talking to the guy about a couple of my problems and things that I already kind of knew with my general router modem setup and how it was working and just not being great here in general. And again, I didn't want to invest all the money into getting a PFSense NetGate router and setting up a virtual VLAN SSID setup like we've played with up at the other house. And that was cool. I, so, he suggested that I just pick up a cheap router and daisy chain them together. Well, initially that sounded like a great idea in my head, and I didn't see anything wrong on first thought. I should have. I really should have. I understand how NATs work a little bit better. But that brings me to why I want to create this video. So, apparently, if one so-called professional that's operating a store... Um, yeah, he's not installing, is out there giving this advice. I am fearful that the community might be getting this device in, this advice in general, and I want to just put something out there so people understand what's happening when you daisy chain routers together. Now, it does somewhat separate this stuff, and somewhat that offloads the workload of the router or the main router so that this happens but um yeah so let's go ahead and head over here and check out what we're looking at so this is my setup and yeah i did just get done installing and i did do a little bit of electrical here just to get this wired in and get it out of the room and into the owner's closet because again we're going to rent this place for a few months out of the year so with that being said i've added electrical and haven't fully cleaned up from myself but yeah that's me so we have a modem connected to an asus router and then the asus router is connected to the linksys router so all the traffic's traveling from the modem into the first router and then the second router now obviously i'm sure you guys can tell these are all in one cheap routers this is not an sg 1100 or better this is not some commercial grade router that's configured this is just homeowner grade stuff that a lot of people doing smart home things are probably playing with so the idea here is that all the smart home light bulbs, light switches, TVs, etc., 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 end up on this cheap little Linksys. Now, this Linksys is like 30 bucks. It's just a cheap little thing. And I was actually pretty impressed with its feature set. And now, this video is absolutely no feedback on this Linksys device. It's other than it being slow, which you expect out of a $30 device. Um, it's a pretty decent little device as far as options and stuff. I don't feel it worthy of doing an unboxing and a review, so I didn't film unboxing it. And, I mean, I guess I can go into the web interface if you really want to check it out. But there was even some support for VLANs in there, which I was shocked about. Because 
that $150 Asus, I think it's an AX3000 or something, um, sitting there, it doesn't have some of this support. Now, it has support for a lot of other things and a very nice, comfy feeling, intuitive AI, not AI, um, GUI for its web interface and stuff. But yeah, anyways, I prefer PFSense a lot better over either of these devices. Regardless, uh, PFSense can be a little bit more complicated for a homeowner to set up and require a little bit more configuration. But enough rambling, let's get back to the point. So I set everything up and I actually set the Linksys up with the old SSID and password from the Asus. So basically everything in the house moved over and then I just had to move my wife's cell phone and my computer and a couple of other work devices over to the Asus. Well, let's switch over here to the full desktop view and check out what's going on here. And generally, if I had thought about it, I should have known it was going to happen. And this is the intent of making this video. So here we go with the desktop view and I've zoomed in because a few of you guys have complained that I was zoomed out quite far. So I hope you enjoy this a little bit more zoomed in view and I'll try to do it a little bit more often here. Okay, so I just had to change that to the display. Apparently my Mac wasn't showing my wireless settings here. So we had to move down to my Mac's display. And so if we click on the wireless settings here, you can see that you're on the land of bad things one, which is kind of a joke. These are IoT devices that we've been playing with, and I call them bad things. I don't particularly care for them in a lot of cases, but I do find their use, and I do understand their use, and I do somewhat find them fun. But with that being said, this is the SSID of the Asus router that we're looking at here. So if I was... To go to this Asus router, you see it show up. Now, if I was to open a tab and attempt to go to the Linksys router, you're going to see that it continuously just tries to load over and over and over again. And that's to be expected. There's a NAT coming out of the... Um, Linksys router, so there's a separation, a firewall separation between the Asus and the Linksys. So that's fairly to be expected here where we can't load into the Linksys router from the Asus router. But heading back over to our web browser again, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect to the Asus router or the Linksys router rather. There you see, Linksys automatically loads. But here we go, if we were to close the Asus tab so it'll load again and enter the IP address of it, you can see that everything from the Linksys router can be seen, everything that's on the Asus router can be seen from the Linksys router. Now, the Asus router can't see the Linksys router due to the NAT settings. But like in my case, if I was to put my smart home things on the Asus router, then all my, and my computers on the Linksys router, the smart home things could not see these computers, which generally is a good thing. You'll have an extra firewall to get through. Now, if you're inside one firewall, you're probably going through the other firewall, but maybe not. Maybe you've somehow exploited a smart home thing and the computers are at least safe. So that might be a good idea. But, and this might be the advantage, you're, you need your, and your computers can see the stuff on the Linksys. Sorry about the mumbling and confusion. So maybe that's a good idea. But at least in my scenario, I used a cheap router, the Linksys router, as my smart home router. And and that generally is probably what a lot of people want to do. And what happens is if I was to try to do a speed test here, all connected to my Linksys router, we're going to see a huge speed impact. Impact. So I would generally, if I wanted this to work, want to go ahead and have the faster router be the lead router just like I've configured it. And that would be where I'd want more of my computer stuff. But in route configurations, we can find that the computers, but that the lead router has to be as fast or we have 
a speed impact, like 93 megabits download. Now we'll let this finish and I'll switch back to the Asus router and let you see the speed difference there. So if we switch to the Asus router, let me go ahead, run the same test, same server, way different speeds. So we wouldn't want to put this Linksys router in front of the Asus router because we'd bottleneck the whole entire network. So the moral of this kind of chat is just be careful what you're doing when you daisy chain these. I don't suggest daisy chaining these. Honestly, between these two routers, and if I had bought a faster router and set it up kind of the way I mentioned, I would be more money than buying an SG-1100. And the SG-1100 ranges between $180 and $220, depending on where I've seen it bought, the NetGate website being the cheapest. And then you're looking at another $50 for a TP-Link EAP-225. And so 250 plus dollar ASUS routers could achieve some form of segregation but if you were just to spend the money and purchase a netgate unit and a decent wireless access point you're going to be cheaper than if you had bought two of these routers and gain a lot more functionality and traffic shaping now there is a definite uh learning curve to them and but that's what we're all here for and we enjoy doing so with that i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know i did a lot of talking here a lot of rambling and hopefully everybody caught the point um that's that have a good night